Soninha, você tá no mudo. Sorry! I'm still a little bit confused with those technologies, lots of technologies that I need to set up today and I was having a very tough time, but I guess I've, I got everything right right now. So let's start again. Let's start over. Thank you very much for joining us today. Good morning to everyone. Mm, everybody is hearing me. I cannot. Oh, yes. Yeah. Everyone can hear me? It's yes, yeah, we can. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so let's start with a quick reminder uh, about our Encontros à Luz do Evangelho de Jesus. It's, um, this is the meetings that we have every Monday after our public meeting where we get together to reflect about the gospel according to spiritism and about the teachings from our master Jesus. And uh, happens every Monday after the public meetings from 8 to 8.30. So every, everybody is welcome to join us. And um, the transmission is by Zoom. So it's really nice to be able to see each, each of your uh, faces there and um, get trying to get together, even though we are in this uh, social distancing. So thank you very much for joining us. And um, let's start with uh, our text. I'm just trying to find here. Sorry. There you go. Everybody can see my screen. Not yet, Sonia. No. So let's give another minute, maybe. Let's see. Okay. How's that? Oh, yes. Okay. I don't know if you can if you can see my my little screen down here with or just the text. But let's get started. So we we get started as as we go, guys. I'm so sorry that we are starting now with this kind of transmission. So it's a little bit complicated at the first beginning, <laughs> but then gets better. So this text, um, it's from Our Daily Bread, which is um, a book with some text from Emmanuel and it's, it's psychographed by Chico Xavier. And the text that we are gonna use to, to our harmonization today is this uh, number seven two, Contemplate Far Further Ahead. So far with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Jesus from Luke chapter six, verse 38. To the schemo, the sky is a continent made of ice, sustaining the seals. To the salvage of the forests, there is no paradise greater than an abundant hunt. To a man of sectarian religious faith, the glory beyond the grave is exclusively his and to those of his participants. To the wise man, this world and the celestial circles that surround him are small departments of the universe. Transfer your observations to your field of daily experiences and do not forget that the external situations shall be registered within you according to the reflections you picture in your conscience. 
if you persevere in anger, in anger, all the forces around you will appear enraged. If you prefer sadness, you will note disenchantment in every step of the road. If you have doubts about your personal ability, no one will be have confidence in your efforts. If you have become accustomed to habitual disturbances and difficulties, it will be next to impossible to learn to live in peace with yourself. You will breathe in either a superior or inferior zone, tortured or peaceful, whatever you choose to direct your mind. Within the organization with which pleases you, you will live with the genius that you can call upon. If you remain idle, at rest, you will do so in whichever way you desire. If you involve yourself in work, you will find a thousand different ways of being of service. As you stroll along, stroll along, the scenery that unfolds you shall always be to your leaking as you evaluate it to be. For with the same measure you apply to nature, the living creation of God, nature will equally measure you. So let's pray. So in this moment, let's try to calm down our thoughts our mind. Let's sit comfortably. And let's think about God. Connect with his love and mercy. Asking to his permission and his lights to our thoughts to today. Let's ask to our Master Jesus to be with us, inspiring us regarding the, the reflections about his teachings in our lives. Let's get together and reflect profoundly within our hearts so we can apply these teachings to our daily basis decisions. Connected with him, connected with God, we can make good choices. Show all the spirituality, our guardian angels help us today so we can have a public meeting with reflections, good reflections that can help us to transform our lives. So be it. So, hello again, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, I can see here, so I see Victor, welcome, Renata, Luis, Marieta, it's good to see you here, and uh, everybody that is uh, in YouTube or Facebook, thank you very much for joining us. And if you have any comments or any questions, please let us know. I'm gonna try to answer your questions as we go. And, um, and yeah, please let me know if you have any comments or questions, okay? And today we are gonna reflect upon the parable of the narrow and wide doors, which, which is um, 
a parable that we find in the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus tells us about two doors and invites us to go through one door. And the question here is, uh, which one have I been choosing to enter? So, um, let's get started. So these doors that Jesus is teaching us from the Matthew's gospel, uh, actually in English, I just would like to, yeah. yes. Just the, uh, are you sharing the PowerPoint? Yes. Oh, can you tr try again? Because we're still looking at the, uh, our daily uh, bread. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna try again. I can see on my end, that is everything good. How's that now? I... Yes, thank you. Ah, please, thank, yeah, thank you. And please let me know every time that you cannot see properly um, what I have been showing to you. And if there is any technical problems, please let me know, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, so now that everybody's seeing my, my screen, that's, uh, that's our reflection today. So uh, I was, as I was uh, telling you, um, this uh, parable in English version, you're gonna find that doors, gates, because uh, we are uh, using some, many of our resources or most of them are from uh, Portuguese uh, books, spiritism books. And so we are gonna use the doors and uh, because of the reflections that we're bringing up here, are more related to doors than gates, so it makes more sense to keep um, uh, this uh, the name as it is. So, um, so we are going to talk about a very good feature, uh, virtue. Actually, all the virtues are good, but this virtue is the one that we normally use in our daily basis. Um, we are using this virtue all the time, every time, every moment. We, even though we are sometimes are not aware about it, the discernment is a virtue that is very close to us. And this virtue is related to the free will. So the free will, um, it's a uh, it's, um, law, it's a divine law that gives us the right to make choices. And this parable of the narrow and the wide doors, Jesus is, is warning us about how to make good choices. He's inviting us to reflect and to understand the consequences of each choice. And we are gonna reflect also upon Emmanuel uh, words, where he says that he tells us about the treasure of time. He is reminding us about the good and the wise use of our time. We are going to reflect upon the divine laws, which a laws that we are invited to access in our mind and to in comply with, and to learn more about the virtues that will help us through this journey. So let's change here. Okay, so the references that we are using for this lecture today uh, is from Alan Kardec's uh, books, The Spirits Book and the Gospel According to Spiritism. Um, the book uh, from Alidio Cerqueira Filho, The Existential Balance. It's, uh, this is my free translation. The name in, in Portuguese is Equilibrio Existencial, if anybody can see here. It's, uh, it's for sale in our um, uh, books, bookstore. And also, uh, I'm guessing this book is available for rent as well. Please let us know if you would like to uh, get a, one, um, one book of this. Um, we are going to reflect upon a lecture from Artur Valadaris. He is from um, 
the núcleo of uh, pesquisa do espiritismo in São Paulo, Brazil. It's it's a place where they they get together and they do studies and search about the gospel. And his name is Artur Valadares, and he brings us this lecture called Door to Freedom. And we're going to use some Emmanuel citations as well from the book of the Spirit of Truth, uh, psychographed by Chico Xavier. And uh, I would like to invite all of you to reflect upon some questions that we are going to try to answer through uh, our reflections today. So let's reflect. Why Jesus invite us to enter through the narrow door? Why only few ones can find it? What do these doors represent? What is the impact of each choice? And what have we been looking for in the doors that we are opening nowadays? So those are some of the questions that I would like to bring to you today. And uh, for sure, if you're going to have any other questions, please let me know. As I said before, I can see your comments here in the YouTube and also on Facebook. So, and on the chat too, in our um, channel here in the Zoom. All right, so um, let's go through the parable. So Jesus uh, tell us in Matthew chapter seven, verse 13 to 14. Enter through the narrow door for wide is the door and broad is the road that lead us to destruction. And many enter through it, but it is small is the door and narrow the road that lead us to life and only a few find it. So what we can understand about this? Just one second guys, I just need to enter here on the Facebook because my page closed and I couldn't know. I was not aware about it. Okay, there we go. So, okay, we are good now. Thank you. So what do we can reflect upon this parable? Uh, the mentors from the Spiritis are which is um, a project from, it's, um, it's from the Mato Grosso Spiritism Federation, tell us that every time that we see a verb in a present tense imperative like this enter, that means that it's a convocation. It's a um, strong invitation from our model and guide, Jesus, to our conscience. Here, he is pointing us, he is telling us to enter through this narrow door. But there are some questions here that we maybe we are asking to ourselves. Why should we accept his invitation at the first place? Why only few find this door, this narrow door? Why the wider door lead us to destruction? And why the narrow one lead Oi. us to life? Hola. Hello. So I don't know who is telling us. Hello to us, but welcome. I think it was just Anna, Sonia. Keep oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's fine. So welcome, Anna. So um, we found um, in the text from Emmanuel, in one text from Emmanuel, the wall of time, uh, where he shed some light. 
on this passage from Jesus. Uh, the name of the text is The Wall of Time from the book, uh, The Spirit of Truth. So he explained us that door is not only an entrance in a wall that uh, give us passage to come and go uh, from a place to another. He's always uh, stating that actually the doors here it's related to time, the time that we have uh, available here in our existence. It's important for us to try to uh, take the spirit from the letters when we are reading Jesus' teachings. Uh, mostly of the time he's using symbols to express a more, um, more deeply um, meaning. So in this, uh, in, in this interpretation from Emmanuel, he would say that, I'm trying to change my page here. It's not working. Oh, there we go. So he is telling us that without a doubt, the narrow and the wide door belong to the wall of time situated in the front of all of us. So we all know that time is a God's blessing to all of us. And Emmanuel is telling here about the treasure of time, that every minute that we spend here in this life, we have blessing opportunities to practice this virtue called discernment. This virtue discernment help us to make good choices, like I said. Uh, there is a website called uh, Parana uh, Spiritual Moments. Uh, it's in Portuguese, it's a Momento Espírita. It's from the Parana Spiritism uh, Federation. I strongly um, uh, recommend you to check this page. There are lots of texts there that are very, very useful for our daily basis. And I found this one, which is very relevant to our talking today. And he, uh, this text says that from the moment that we open our eyes in the morning, we are choosing. We are choosing between one attitude to another one. When, the, when we hear the clock alarm, ringing, we can choose between complaining that it's another, that we are not having another day off, that it's Monday, we need to go to work, or we thank God for another day of opportunities in the physical body. We can thank God to have a job. We can thank God to have a ceiling above our heads, that we have family, friends, that we have health. So this existence brings us every minute, in every moment, chances to actively develop this virtue of discernment. When I am refusing to learn from an experience that I'm going through, that life is bringing to me to learn, I am not practicing this virtue because I'm not seeing the good things that I have in my life, the good blessings that God provides me. <clears throat> and Emmanuel says that the white door actually expresses our inner imbalance, which forces us to the pain of reparation with unfortunate, unfortunate losses of time. So here, let's focus on a little bit on this imbalance. So when we are not, we are, when we are not balanced in life, when we are not um, feeling um, connected with God, when that means that we are distant from him, distant from the loss that God um, created to guide us through this life. 
or through all our lives. And many times, because we are not connected with God, we make choices that are not good to us, that we are not measuring, good, doing a very good measuring about the, the consequences of it then. We are mostly the time seeking for things outside of us instead inside of us. We are making more choices related to material things, material um, um, choices. Like we are choosing instead close our eyes, focus, in our, focus on in ourselves, in our inner selves to connect with God. We are most of the time focused only on what I am having as a pleasure for this time and not what I'm going to gain as a spirit, or immortal spirit if I choose instead um, doing something that is totally for this moment, like it's more material things, instead of doing things that are more important for me as immortal spirit. Like instead of choosing reading a book regarding spirituality, I'm choosing uh, watch a violin movie or so on and so forth. I'm not here trying to um, say what we should do and what we should, you shouldn't do. It's just trying to bring some light which kind of choices that we are making, how we are, how we are um, taking advantage of this time now and here. So some, most of the time we are, we are more uh, focused on doing things, having things, living a life without purpose or meaning. Those are the doors that the world normally often to us. We, I need to be better, I need to uh, have the, the, the car of the year, the, the, bed, the, the best house in the neighborhood, or things like that. I'm not saying that this is not good, it is good, but it's good to have the balance between what is important and what is necessary. So when we are doing that, we are running away from our self-encounter that Luis uh, brought to us another day in his talks. And when we are running away from our self-encounter, we, we are also running away from God. We are keeping the distance from God. And we never will be happy in this way. Because what is the God's will to us? And guys, you are welcome to interrupt me and to ask me any questions or put on comments here alive, okay? You just need to um, put on the chat or just interrupt me with you if you have any comments. So what is the God's will for us? What his will, what he wants from us? If, if anybody was uh, here in the um, Projeto Espiritizar that we had yesterday, uh, we, are, we were talking about the, the prayer, Our Father. Um, Alirius told us that God's will towards us is just one, that we be happy. He created universal laws that govern all the universe in every person's life. And those laws were created only for one reason, to keep the harmony and the happiness of the universe and all the human beings. Uh, as the question 614 from the um, Spirits book, where uh, Kardec asks his, what is the natural law, which is the, or the universal law or the divine laws, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the nature law is the God's law and it alone ensures the happiness of human beings. And it shows them what they should or should not do. And they only suffer when they are deviated from it. But how are we gonna know what, 
how, how we're gonna know what uh, these laws are trying to teach us, how we're gonna know what we need to do, we should or we shouldn't do. Well, we just need to connect it with our conscious because where is the, the loss? Where are the loss? It's in our consciousness. And we can notice that when we are doing something that is not complying, it's not, doesn't comply with the divine, some divine law, we feel that. And we have this, those little voices in our minds stating that it's, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do that. This is, those are the laws in our consciousness saying, hey, you are not taking the right pathway towards God. You are trying to take some shortcuts here and which is a waste of time. And why? Because every time that we don't do things in the right way, we need to redo them. And this is the waste of time. That's what Emma now is, is trying to say here to us. And how about this existence? How have I been using my time? Do I know that I am a mortal spirit? Do I know that I'm a time traveler and this existence is just one station? So if I agree with this, what's the choices that I have been making? And the narrow door. The narrow door reveals, reveals the spiritual adjustment that allow us to walk on the evolution path with the correct use of the hours. So here, Emmanuel is stating to us that the narrow door save us time and suffering, protect us from our decisions. And this is not what Jesus uh, told us about to focus on store things that the thieves don't break in and steal and focus on treasures that the moths and the vermin don't strike. And uh, he says that we are, uh, where is our treasure is our heart. And we don't see in many, many books from spiritism that mostly of them from Andrea Luis, uh, the stories that he brings to us that explain how much suffering those spirits that pass through the other life they are experiencing because they make they made choices focused only on material things and didn't take time to reflect upon the spirituality. So Emmanuel says that crossing those doors are mandatory. We need to cross those doors. We need to cross the narrow or the wide doors. And choosing from one or another interferes in our life tomorrow. We have this right to choose because that's the free will uh, law. So the doors that we enter in the past, the, the doors that we entered and have entered in the past brought us to this existence as we are today. Because Joanna de Angelis also reminds us that we are here, here of ourselves. We cannot do anything about our past, but we can do many things about our future. And the time is now, the time is here. And then Emmanuel says, before the wall, the past and the present, and beyond the wall, the future and eternity. So now, before we cross any doors, we have the past that brought us where we are here in this present. And beyond the wall, we are gonna have our future and eternity. From here, we have the sowing of today, 
but from there, the harvest of tomorrow. So which door, which type of doors uh, does the world is opening to us, is inviting us to enter? Material desires, work, having fun, those are all the horizontal level of the life. But we are invited to connect the horizontal level to the vertical level of our lives. Always bringing our normal life here, trying to live as much as you can, as the limit of our strength. The virtual, the, the spiritual, bring the spiritual aspect to our life, to our challenges in life, to our work, with our in our relationship within our relatives, friends, whatever we are. When which type of doors that God, that Jesus is invite us to enter, the narrow door, which is the love door. Side is narrow because we need to make efforts to get into a narrow door. It's not easy and 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 um, practical. Like we have lots of space. It looks shining and beautiful. But what are behind those doors? And what are behind the narrow door? So when we are connected with God towards the prayer and meditation, to complying with the law of worship, like Luis brought us last Monday, we are receiving his energy that inspire us in our decisions, that makes us more balanced, to helping us to get the balance to make good decisions, because sometimes it's very hard. Sometimes it's not easy to know how to choose wisely. But from the Spirit's book, we have a question that help us to understand or to get a better sense how to distinguish between what is the narrow door and what is the wide door. So, but before that, I just would like to uh, Sure, to ensure if anybody has any questions. Let me see here. I don't see anything. So let's keep moving ahead. So, question 630 How can we distinguish between good and evil? The spirits, the benevolent spirits, uh, they help us to understand. Good complies with God's law, and wickedness diverges from it. Therefore, to do the right is to comply with God's law, and to do the wrong is to violate that law. So, what we can understand from it? We are invited to be in connection with God. So we'll be able to understand what God, what God wants from us, what the laws are pointing us, which direction the laws are pointing to us. We have the free will, we have this right to to make choice, to do whatever we want to do. And that's the point. We are doing what we want to do. Our will is connected with God's will. Or we, were, we are doing what we, our duty is inviting us to do. So if we are doing if you are um, complying with our duty, our conscious duty. So we are gonna feel this uh, sensation, this feeling that we are learning, that we are 
having this peace of mind, the peace of mind that Jesus uh, told us about from the parable of the bags of gold or the, the, the parable of the talentos. When we do, when we use the sources that we are, that we have been granted to this life, uh, with, when we are doing a good use, according with the law of use, we are multiplying these sources. We are um, sowing wisely in the soil of our hearts and we are sharing the seeds with everyone that are, are around us. So then we, we are gonna be able to, um, to come and to share the master's happiness, as Jesus said. When we don't do that, we are accessing the law of responsibility as well, we are we are always assessing this law of responsibility uh, when we make choices. It doesn't matter if they are good or not good. And we are also having um, being accessing the cause and consequence law, which is the law that bring us the results of our choices. And it's not a punish punishment kind of law because punishment doesn't exist in the law, God's law. It's just the result. If it's positive, it's because we did good choices. If it's not positive, it's because we didn't do very good choices. And what do we need to do? We just need to learn from it. But we need to keep in mind the mercy law will be always, always you'll be there helping us to go through, helping us to, uh, to have the burden lighter because above all, God is love. And from the same text from the spiritual moment, they point out there something very, very relevant that it's about parents and kids. Um, the writer, he mentioned that Parents could help kids to learn from this law. And they should teach them from the early age. Uh, if a child choose to get, uh, uh, to hit uh, his, his or her classmate, he and or she, they or they, they are gonna get few, few scratches. And then they are gonna complain that they got some scratches. and then the parents can teach them this is the result of their attitudes and they are entirely entirely responsible for this um, result so we are going to be helping them to act with discernment to understand the consequences of their acts from the early ages so and helping them to choose that to choose better what they are gonna do when they are facing some challenges in life. These are gonna help them through the life. So then we are invited to develop this virtue of discernment, everyone, every of us, to distinguish what is the best for us, which is to comply with the divine laws through the exercise of the essential virtues of life. The virtues are the noblest feelings that a human being can develop. And this part of this slide actually what is extract from uh, the existential prayer uh, from the book Chakras Energy and Chakras Energy and the Power of Faith and Prayer that we reflected upon last evening. And we have us also for sale and for rent in our uh, library and, and bookstore at the FSS. So this, to develop this virtue of discernment, it's very important from the beginning, since that we are little. 
you help us through life. And I can tell that by, um, by myself, because I, I will ask, apologize for you, but uh, just because I wanna bring myself as an example, but sometimes in my life, I, I had a very hard time to choose because I didn't trust in myself. I thought that I didn't have the resources to choose well because of the choices that I made in the past that were not good. But I, I have learned that when I'm connected with the um, divine loss, certainly I'm gonna do the right, the right choice. If I am aware that the right complies with God's law and the wrong violates it, so I am always be able to choose what's the best for me. So, and that's the invitation to the narrow door. To evolve through a vertical life, not only the level, this the horizontal level is important to us. It is, is important, but it's the basement. What we are here for is to evolve in the vertical uh, direction. So Jesus also said on John 8, then you will know the truth and the truth you set you free. I brought this because um, sometimes we have heard so many times this uh, sentence, but we don't know exactly uh, what's the context that Jesus said that. And it's totally related to this parable of the doors. When he said that he was with the Jewish people and uh, they were, um, he was teaching them uh, about if they hold their teachings, they, they will really uh, be their, his disciples. And so they will know the truth and the truth you set them free. And then they answer to him, we are uh, Hebron's descendants. So we never been slaves before. So what, what are you saying? How can you say that we should, that we shall be set free? And then Jesus replied to them, very truly, I will tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. So then what Jesus is trying to um, teaching us here, what he's teaching us here is the truth or the divine laws, they will help us to not be prison of our sins. But what is seen already. Sometimes um, we have um, a wrong uh, understanding or um, not a clear understanding about what is seen. So seen, it's, it's that means only uh, actually uh, the translation of this word was not very well done or because of the, the church and all this uh, knowledge or the, all this aspect of punishment that they brought to us, um, we, we have a, a wrong understanding about what is sin. Sin is just miss the target. So our ego, like our selfishness, our pride, uh, our, uh, all the, the negative feelings that we have, it's only trying to attend us. They, this feelings is trying to attend us. When we are, have, when we are um, acting with pride, we are just trying to preserve ourselves, to give some values to ourselves. The intention is positive, but the direction is inadequate. And when we are uh, seeing, when we see sins as a prison, what do we want, we can understand about that. When we had, when we decide, for instance, we, we, when we decide to not forgive someone, somebody, when somebody offended us, we have different doors to enter. We have a door that it's 
a weekend like that means we are we are gonna revenge we are gonna do something to that person we are react to that person right away or we can choose um, not uh, do anything but we are gonna keep that feeling inside of us and in our mind in our hearts and being like thinking about that all the time and hurt we can choose to um, I don't know maybe kill somebody because we don't we don't accept that offense or we can choose the narrow door which is forgiveness so this is very important because the narrow door is it's narrow because it's very hard the efforts that we need to make in order to forgive to, for, to forgive somebody the other ones are easier but we are going to be stuck in that doors because that if if i kill somebody how many existences i'm going to need to um to have in order to repair that uh, act. And when I forgive, I'll be free. I'll be free that burden. I will be free um, from that toxic energy. And Jesus also said, I am the door. Whoever enters through me, you'll be saved. They will come and go. They will come in and go out and find pasture. So. This is the door that we are going to be really peace, really happy, because that's the door, the Jesus door. It's really um, ask for us more efforts and efforts. We are when we are making efforts to develop a virtue. It's not something that we're going to get right away. It's something that we are going to gradually achieve through our lives. We are going to do a little bit for us to not today, the most that we can do. Tomorrow we try again, and tomorrow we're going to try a little bit more harder, and so on and so forth, until we'll be able to really be strong, to really uh, act with autonomy and not with aut in automatic way. We are not going to be reacting, we're going to be acting upon something with. Uh, with a good like act virtually like with with virtue like developing a, a, a virtue towards that situation that challenge that the life is bringing to us so the white doors is an entrance to illusion emmanuel says and the exit is through readjustment when i do something the white doors if i choose not forgive uh, i'm gonna be in a situation that I'm going to create um, a very tough time for me, an unhappy time. And I need to repair whatever I have, I have done because that's the law. That's how we learn. It's not a punishment. It's just the way we learn. And the narrow door is the exit of error. I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not going to act as I should. Um, I should act uh, complying with the God's law. And then the, re the entrance is the renewal. And to finish our talking today, I'm going to bring, uh, I would, would like to bring this uh, text from the, the Gospel of Spiritism, where the spirits, um, the benevolent spirits teaching us that the door to salvation is narrow because the man who wants to go through it must make great efforts on himself to overcome his evil tendencies. Sometime that few are resignated to. It's the complement of the maxim. Many are called and few are chosen. So uh, it's, I would like to bring a metaphor here that Alidio brought to us where he ex explained this, uh, make efforts the greater efforts is like a car that when you put the first gear, it's slow, but it's strong. And as long as way it goes, you just you don't need more the first gear. You can choose a lighter gear because the speed up, it's 
it's going all, all right. So you are you are going all right. So that's that's how it works. Oh, the first the first efforts are really hard, but then we are getting more and more knowledge, more knowledge and more. Uh, we develop a little bit the discernment today. Tomorrow we try harder and we get a little bit more. So we are going to get to the point that we don't need to make too much efforts. But sometimes we don't make that greater efforts. Sometimes we just want to comply with our will, which is not connected with God's will sometimes. And that's the what the discernment virtue it's important to us. And what we can reflect upon these uh, teachings from the Gospels as Spiritism also is um, we need to recognize, we are invited to recognize the moral transformation that we are invited to. We are, we as Spiritists, we are going to be recognized by the moral transformation and by the efforts that we employ in order to dominate our bad instincts. We don't need to be perfect now, but we are invited to give a first step towards it. And many are called and few are chosen, which means that many are called, but who, who who uh, has been chosen, chose somebody. We are choosing ourselves. We are choosing, we are giving this step ahead. We are the called ones, but it's up to us to choose to dedicate our lives to follow the steps of Jesus, our model and guide. So uh, I would like just to leave here and bringing again another reflection is how have I been choosing to live my life? How have I been choosing um, to use my time wisely, to focus on the essentials habits that I'm gonna take with me through the eternity? Which door have I been choosing to enter? So that's it. Uh, it's uh, I passed one minute. I just would like to know if anybody would like to ask any questions. Hi, Sonia. Um, I uh, I really liked what you brought about the uh, the passage from 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 John when Jesus tells us that uh, the the truth will set you free, but you also continue to to bring us the context that it uh, resounds around because. It was interesting when you said that the Pharisees told him that uh, they they didn't need to be set free because they weren't uh, slaves. And Jesus told them that once you sin, you, you become one. And uh, it is true when you think about uh, when we commit things and when we don't feel the uh, apprentice feeling, we it's like we imprison ourselves in guilt. And, exactly. Uh, yeah, and then through through knowing the truth and and and, and making efforts to to live it, that's 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 us setting us ourselves free from our own from our own guilt from our own uh, misperceptions. So yeah, thank you. Yes, wonderful. Thank you very much for bringing this aspect. I, I had forgotten about to talk about the guilty feeling that really imprisons us, and is well very well a reminder. Thank you very much for your collaboration, Victor. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else would like to contribute? All right, so thank you very much, uh, everyone, for joining me today. And I'm going to do the final prayer. And so once again, let's close our eyes, um, connected with our um, angel garden garden angel, and that's connected with uh, our Father and our Master Jesus, and thank you, thank all them for the inspirations that they provide to us today to reflect upon Jesus' teachings, to bring these teachings to our lives, and 
and ask them to help us through our journey today and tomorrow and through eternity to make good choices. I wish everyone to be with Jesus' peace, peace and love and wish you all a blessed Sunday. Thank you very much. So be it. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.